Hey folks, this is Nick McPhee, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the concept of values, which is a really important idea in computer science, and types, what kinds of values we can have, and then in the context of spreadsheets, how we can format those values. So the first thing is, in computer science, there are typically lots of values, and those values can have different types, and spreadsheets support a certain set of types. We're going to be talking today about Google Spreadsheets, but there are similar things would be true for other kinds of spreadsheet systems like Excel as well. As a simple example, 5 is a perfectly reasonable value, and we can put that in a spreadsheet. But we can also put things like strings. This is a string, which is a piece of text, and you'll often see text uses the type for something like that. But in programming languages, the term string is often used. And then another key type in spreadsheet land is that of a Boolean, where the type only has two values. Numeric types have lots of values, sort of an infinite number of values, although there are limitations because of the limitations of computers. But in principle, there's an infinite number of numbers, for example. Um, there's an infinite collection of strings. Booleans are only true and false. Those are the only values that are possible for Booleans. And if you type those into the Google Spreadsheets, they'll be formatted in all caps and centered as a way of saying, I'm thinking of this as a Boolean, which is distinct from a string. And we can, in fact, get a string version of those things by putting them in quotes. So if I put it in quotes, now that's actually a string and not a Boolean value. So let's actually tidy this up a little bit and put some labels on this. So as I go through, I'll use a variety of basic formatting techniques in Google Spreadsheets, um, which you might find useful. So I'm actually going to, first thing I'm going to do is insert a column to the left. I'm also going to insert a column above. And I'm going to say, I want, actually I'm going to make, we'll say type, oops, type and example value and to make it clear that that's a header i'll go ahead and make it a light green background and a bold value so this is a number oops and this is a string or text this is a boolean this is a boolean and this is also a string or text and one way that I can tell that it really is uh, what I'm saying it is, is there's a built-in function in Google Spreadsheets called type. Let's go ahead and also do the background color. And, the, and if I say equal type, and we'll talk more about functions and function calls later, and I'll go ahead and take the suggested autofill. The important thing is that um, type returns a number that indicates what kind of thing Google Spreadsheets thinks a particular value has. And so one, it turns out, is the number for numbers. It's the type for numbers. Two is strings. And notice that row three and row six both gave us a two. So it did think this is a string by putting quotes around it, but that these two are both Booleans. So it turns out that four is the Google spreadsheet code for Booleans. All right. And these numbers seem pretty arbitrary. Don't worry about that. Um, this is just to point out that the two strings are both actually strings and that this is different uh, from that. So, Great, we can have types. Oh, and I should also point out that we can have um, uh, floating point numbers. So, boom, ba -doop, ba -doom. and that also turns out to be a number. So Google Spreadsheets doesn't, in a significant way, distinguish between, say, integers and floating point numbers. A lot of computing systems do. Google Spreadsheets doesn't really. Okay, so there we've got um, a 
set of different types and some examples of those types. So actually, I'm going to put another label, one above different types of values. Okay, one of the things one, we might notice here is that the way these are aligned, right aligned, left aligned, or centered, seems to depend on the type. So Google Spreadsheets attempts to choose a good alignment, left, centered, right aligned, based on the type of the value. Um, but we can override that with this alignment menu here. So let's have a look at that. So we'll have uh, different types of alignment. Um, and I'll have an alignment type and an example. And let's again bold and we'll move this to the next green. And let's actually make this a little wider. Make this a little wider. So um, if we stick with the default, we found up above that strings. So, for example, the University of Minnesota Morris, and it's a little too narrow to see what the alignment is. There we go. Strings are left aligned, whereas Booleans are centered and numbers are right aligned. But we can change the alignment if we wish. So, uh, we could say, well, let, we want a Boolean or a number, say, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it here. Let's say we want these two to be left aligned. Well, if I go here and I choose left aligned, lo and behold, I can force the system to left align those even when by default it would right align them. And similarly, I can center align um, and uh, I can grab my string here, which would not normally be center aligned, and my number, and I can select those two cells, and I can say center, and lo and behold, they're now center aligned, and I can right align, and the two values that are not normally right aligned are these two here, copy, paste, and right align. So, I can force things to be left aligned that would not normally be left aligned. I can force things to be centered that would not normally be centered. And I can force things to be right aligned that would not normally be right aligned. Or I can leave things at their default. Now, an important part of a lot of spreadsheet design is the formatting of numbers. Um, and so let's talk about what some of the options are there. And there are going to be some surprises. So let's look at different types of numeric formatting. And we'll have format and example display. And we'll again do our little green header and bold. OK. So let's start with automatic. Boom. And let's say we want to just put, I'm going to just put in a number. And this number might seem kind of arbitrary, but you know, it's a number. It gives us an idea of what we're doing. And this is the automatic formatting. Type in a number, this is what it's going to look like. But we have actually a lot of options. If we look here, where it has more formats, this section here is actually ways of formatting numbers. So you can say, I want to format as a currency. I want to format it as a percent. I want to reduce the number of decimal places that are being shown, or I want to increase the number of decimal places being shown. What we're going to focus on here is this more formats menu, which has a lot of different formats. Um, and so we want to go through and see what those formats look like um, and how we might use them. So I'm going to start here with number, percent, and scientific. So I'll say number, percent, and scientific. And I'll copy this number down. And now here, I will go to number. 
and I'll choose that. So what that did, and we can see that there's a hint here, it's got a comma. Um, so one of the things that it does is it puts commas between every group of three digits to make it easier to read. So now we know that this is 44,426. And the default number also reduce uh, rounds so that you only have two decimal places after to the right of the decimal point. So instead of 71875, we get 72. We can also do percent. Percent. Now percent also by default does two characters to the right of the decimal point. It adds a percent sign. And because it's treating this number as a percent, it sort of multiplies it by 100. Um, so 0.5 is 50%. So it multiplies the value you have. Um, essentially, it moves the decimal point to the right two positions. So we now have 4442671.88%. And these are all the same number underneath. The formatting is just affecting how they're being displayed on the screen. Now, scientific, boom. So it uses scientific notation. So this is 4.44. So again, it's rounding to two digits to the right of the decimal point times 10 to the positive fourth. So this is this value, but move the decimal to the right four. Um, and you would get something again approximating this. A negative here would move the decimal point to the left, that number of positions. And this allows us to represent very large numbers. So we could have times 10 to the 147th, um, which would be a number that's 147 digits long, and that's really pretty huge. Um, and so this is, can be used to represent very large and very small numbers, numbers that are very close to zero. So then what else do we have over here? Well, in the next section, we have accounting, financial, currency, and currency rounded. So let's do them. Accounting, financial, currency, and currency rounded. Boom. And I'll take this value again, and I'll paste it in these four squares. And let's see what these different things do. So accounting. Uh, put a dollar sign on the far left. It added the commas and it rounded. So this is actually very similar to number so far, except for the dollar sign over on the far left. Turns out there's another thing happening here, which we'll talk about in a second. Financial is sort of the same as number. Um, so it gives us two digits to the right of the decimal point and it gives us commas. Uh, does something else, which we'll talk about in a second, but that'll do for now. Currency, we get a currency symbol and two decimal points and commas. We can actually change what currency symbol as it, that is. We'll see that in a second. And then currency rounded um, skips the pennies. So it rounds to the nearest dollar, yen, euro, whatever your currency type is. We can also uh, specify our own currency if we want. So currency, I'll do the euro. Um, if I take this, copy, paste, and I say uh, under more formats, there's more currencies, and I can choose from a long list of currencies. Um, so I'll actually, we'll go Chinese Yuan. Um, and I can say apply, and then it does just what currency did, um, except it changes the currency symbol uh, to be the currency that you chose. And my use of euro here is incorrect, so let's fix that if you want. Now, it turns out there was a subtle thing going on here that I didn't, uh, my examples didn't get to, which is... Um, if the values are negative, some of these actually handle that differently. So let's actually fix, add some negative values in. 
So I'll just take the value we've been using, but I'll make it a negative value. Widen this column a little bit. And copy, paste. Okay. So automatic didn't change anything. Number won't change anything except for doing the going to two decimal places. Uh, percent, nothing interesting there. Scientific notation, won't be anything interesting there. Accounting, this is the first place where we see something interesting. Instead of a minus sign, it puts parentheses around the number, which is standard in accounting practice. And we see the hint that that would be the case with the parentheses, oops, the parentheses here. So now let's go to financial. And it also does the parentheses. Let's go to currency. It notice the lack of parentheses here. So we would expect it probably to not do parentheses. And indeed it does not. Currency rounded also doesn't use parentheses. And it's these are sort of recent things I've done. And so I did the Chinese Yuan a second ago, so it still remembers that. And I don't have to go back here to more currencies. So I can just, oh, actually, this is supposed to be currency rounded. This is supposed to be Yuan. So I can just choose Yuan. And again, I have a minus sign in front of the currency symbol. Now, the last section in the format is this date, time, date, time, duration section. This can be a little weird, whereas everything else was kind of obvious in some sense. This section, I think, is the least obvious. Uh, it turns out that dates and times are all stored as numbers and that they're, it's just a matter of formatting that they're displayed as dates and times. So we'll talk about that and look at some examples. So let's create a little section for this. Different types of date, time, formatting. Um, we'll talk about a format and what we display. Background and bold. So what do we got to work with? We have date, time, date, time, and duration. And I'm going to put automatic in here as well. So we can see the value um, before it's been interpreted as a date thing. Uh, duration. So let's pick our number again. And so let's paste you in all these places. Okay. So we have 44,426.7185 as a number. Now we can take that same number and say, I want to see that as a date. And it turns out we get the 18th of August, 2021. It's not super obvious why it would be, why that this number would generate this date. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's try time. We get 5.15 PM. Also not super obvious why this would be 5.15 PM. Let's look at date time. And see if that gives us a clue. Well, that's interesting. So if we take this number and we interpret it as a date and a time, we get the same date that we had up above and the same time formatted differently. This is sort of, you know, military time, 24 hour clock. Um, so, but it's, this is still 515 PM on the 18th of August, 2021. So somehow this is providing a fairly precise moment in time down to the second. Why is these particular moments? Again, not super obvious. Uh, let's look at duration. So now here, this says that this number is a duration of no seconds, 15 minutes. Now that lines up quite nicely with this. And then this very big number, 1,066,241. Hmm, what is going on there? 
Well, it turns out that this is the number of days, the number of hours, sorry, from 1900 to the 18th of August, 2021, 5 p.m. So this number is actually, it turns out this is the number of days since 1900. The integer part is the number of days since 1900. And then the fractional part is a part of a day, a fraction of a day, which in this case is 5 p.m., 5.15 p.m. So this fraction is that much of a day. So 0.71875 of a day it gets you to 5.15 p.m. Who knew? But that's how that works out. So that's how these numbers get converted to dates and times. And that's cool and allows you to do some interesting math. You could add two dates and times and get a new date and time. Um, so you can do some stuff like that that's kind of nifty. But it can be confusing and non-obvious in a lot of circumstances. So... Um, remembering that this is the number of days since and the choice of 1900 is somewhat arbitrary that's just when they happen to it um, but remembering this is the number of days since 1900 can help make sense of these sorts of things um, and if you want them to be displayed as a date or a time it's up to you to choose that format or you can get what you thought was going to be a date or a time looking very not date or time like Okay, so hopefully that gives you uh, a little introduction to the different types available in Google Spreadsheets, um, the ability to align data and what the default alignments are for different types of data, um, different ways of formatting uh, numeric values, and different ways of formatting and displaying time and date information. Hope this helped. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later.